Welcome to The Dirt Report. Today we're talking about the West Australian battery rebate scheme and why the latest change has lost the plot. And not for the reason you may be thinking. No, it's not always about the money. No, no, I digress. It's always about the money, but it is, in this case, a secondary consideration. So hit the like button if this video helped you and subscribe to support the channel. Now strap in because the Cook government has managed to turn a solid idea into a full-blown bureaucratic mess. When this program started, it made sense. WA voted Labour in and battery rebates were part of the promise. And back then, it worked. You would get up to $5,000 off a home battery. VPP participation was optional. Your battery just had to be VPP capable. You didn't have to hand it over. You stayed in control. And yes, some people online warned the powers that be would one day drain your battery for grid support. But it wasn't mandatory back then and it wasn't mandatory anywhere else in Australia. So look, it wasn't going to be a problem. Now here's where things get cooked. Step one, the WA government cut the rebate. Instead of 5,000 for 19,000 Synergy homes, we now get $1,300 for 100,000 homes. More reach, less value, fine. I get the logic. If that was the only change, we wouldn't be here making this video. In fact, it'd be actually fair because people really want batteries for their home to disconnect. Step two, to get that $1,300, you're now forced into a virtual power plant which is mandatory. You are handing control of your battery to Synergy or potentially another third party VPP operator so they can discharge your stored energy whenever they choose to. Now with Synergy, this is up to 30 times a year for up to six hours at a time. And during those events, they can use your entire battery. Now you'll get paid 70 cents per kilowatt hour exported, which I guess sounds generous, Let's actually break it down. Let's say you've got a 10 kilowatt hour battery. That's 30 events times 10 kilowatt hours, which equal 300 kilowatt hours exported annually. Let's multiply that by 70 cents. That's $210 per year. What about a 15 kilowatt battery? Same math, 450 kilowatt hours exported, that's $315. And then if you're one of the lucky folk, you got yourself a 20 kilowatt battery, that's 600 kilowatts a year, which equals to $420 per year. Look, not bad on the surface, but what happens after those events? You'll likely need to buy that energy back during the night at one of those points. So at 34 cents per kilowatt, let's say for a 20 kilowatt hour battery, you're looking at about $204 that you need to spend to replace that 600 kilowatt hours per year. Your net gain, well, 420 minus 204, you get about $216 per year. Do that for a decade and you earn yourself a cool $2,160 from a 20 kilowatt system. And if everything runs perfectly and your battery doesn't degrade faster from all these discharges, then cool. So 10 kilowatt hour battery, that's $1,080. 15 kilowatt hours, 1,620, and of course, 20 kilowatt hours, 2,160, plus that upfront $1,300 rebate. That's not free money. That's uh, grid labor on a payment plan. You're giving up control of your hardware for what? $100 a year or 200? Now, a VPV could potentially reduce your battery performance. To be specific, it could mean that by the 10th year, your battery has much less total capacity and can become obsolete earlier. Not that it will fail, However, let's be clear, accelerated degradation may lead to earlier battery replacement, offsetting the financial gains from a VPP participation. The $2,000 that you might get after 10 years is not going to replace your 20 kilowatt hours of power. This is not even taking into consideration warranty implications. Some battery warranties have a little proviso and make sure you read all the T's and C's for total discharge usage. So if you exceed that before your 10 year warranty, it actually triggers and you lose your overall warranty. This is a serious downgrade caused by a VPP. And it's mandatory if you want your $1,300 plus maybe $2,000 over 10 years. And then it becomes an issue when you choose a battery in Western Australia, you have to choose the one without such a proviso because you're gonna get wrecked in the long term. Then what about your own personal usage patterns of your home? If your energy needs align with VPP operations, the impact, well, it very may well be minimal. However, if the VPP frequently discharges your battery during times you'd prefer to be using your stored energy, 
it could be problematic. After all, having a battery at home means you disconnect completely from the grid. And being disconnected actually still helps the grid because you, as the home, are no longer requiring to put demand on it. So that is a good thing in itself, and VPP is on top of that benefit for the grid. But back to the problem at hand, what's even worse is that you can't opt out. If you want the state rebate, you must join the VPP. This is my problem. This is the problem I'm really annoyed about. This is a massive shift from what the announcement program was originally. It's gone from an incentive to a condition. It feels like the WA government is betting most people won't read the fine print. Well, gosh darn it, I read that yeah, was on the first page, it wasn't fine print. But nonetheless, originally it was incentivized. Now it's forced. And this is not how other states do it. In fact, in Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia VPPs are absolutely optional. And in some cases, they actually make you money because you choose when to participate. There are third-party VPP providers that have a little app you can log in and control when you want to start discharging your battery. In those situations with VPP companies over on the East Coast, you get to keep autonomy and you decide when it's worth it for you to discharge your battery. So in WA, you're being conscripted for a rebate that may not even cover your long-term costs. That's the part that's really crucial. The 70 cents seems really nice at first. Of course, over time, you can calculate easily how much maximum rebate you can get. And in my opinion, the WA government needs to make the VPP optional, not mandatory. If supporting the grid is a good idea, and it is, that's not what I'm arguing here, people will choose to do it. But for $1,300.70, it feels like a bit of a stretch to make it mandatory. You're on the borderline of value, just below it. Personally, I was planning to join the VPP. I was gonna get 20 kilowatt hour battery, I was gonna sell back some of that, but after a few months of working out what I need for my home before I join. But being forced into it, I'm not so sure anymore. Do I take the money and deal with the potential fallout? And again, I should preface that there's a potential of 30 events that will drain your entire battery. But with broken promises come less trust. So my question to you is, will you skip the WA rebate to keep control over your investment and make the most of it for your home or take it up and make a few hundred bucks per year and risk your now very expensive investment potential lifespan? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.